present under emotional pressure any book recommendations um so here's the thing my books do teach you how to um uh how how to be in the moment i honestly i would go into fix that shit because fix that shit is conflict resolution uh tried meditation music while sleep i feel like i addressed childhood trauma but like in a dream that's interesting so interesting. I keep coaching Matt. Oh, I keep catching my fiance in little lies. Uh oh. How do you find out if your ex wants to be with you? Leave it behind, my love. Thank you. Leave it behind. Leave it behind. Leave it behind. If you're thinking about, you know, pursuing an ex, I really suggest you get a coaching session um, so that, you know, I can do a uh, assessment whether or not this is a good idea. When my boyfriend gets mad at me, I get very upset and shut him out. Is this discounting his feelings? It, it could be. Um, I don't know what he's getting mad about. If he's a generous long-term thinker, I would dive into fix that shit and start doing what's in that book. Uh, if you're not sure if he's a generous long-term thinker, like I, I'm, I'm not saying just because he's mad at you that his he's valid, right? I'm not, I'm not going to go there because I don't know. I don't know the situation. I don't know what's happening. Uh, if he's, if you don't know if he's a generous long-term thinker or not, do get no more assholes and look at the twelve character traits and see if he gets at least a nine out of twelve. Always badass. Always badass. Are we not? Come on, we bring it. We bring it. Follow the host. Thank you, Miss Samarat. I love my boyfriend so much, and he says he loves me, but I don't think we'll get anywhere. I'm lost. Come get a coaching session if you need some clarity. Uh, who wants a notification when I go live? Where are my newbies at? Say, I do. I'm back in the dating scene after a six year break. Now I'm super picky because you should be. You're super picky because you should be. Like, use a no kissing for three months dating role. Don't just fall into a relationship with someone you don't know. Get to know somebody and see if they are what you need before you kiss and get into a relationship. Everybody should be picky before getting into a relationship. Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't kiss a stranger and hope for the best. Why did I get over my ex so fast? I feel fine now, but I'm scared... I'm gonna go back to that dark place. Well, it may be it was over long before it was over. Maybe it was over a long time ago. Me, okay my loves, those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture here. Once or twice, you're gonna get a pop-up in the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell when you do that, say I just did. I just did. Nope. I feel like I lost my bad bitch mentality when I started dating. How do I get her back? My love, you dive into no more assholes. Get that bad bitch back. Get no more assholes. Get no more assholes. This is gonna bang. This is this 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 gives you all the attitude you need, my love. I just did. Yay! Welcome. You say that like it's insulting, please. Uh, I'm reading Fix That Shit and it's centered towards women. In my opinion, is there one for men? So I am writing Fix That Shit for men. Uh, I am, I've already started it. It's going to be released in a few months. Is there one for men? So I am writing Fix That Shit for men. Uh, I am, I've already started Guys, my dating book for men is out. It's ready. Who wants to see the cover for it? Who wants to see the cover for my new book for men? The dating book for men is out. The, the dating book for men is out. The perfect play, it's out. It's ready. It's on Amazon. Yes. 
Yes. Who wants to see the cover for the dating book for the mans? For the mans, we got some yeses. I already bought the perfect play. Look at you, my love. Uh, can I buy your book in the Apple Library? So the perfect play is not in the Apple Library. Um, you can only get it on Amazon right now. So here, uh, yes, let's see the cover. There it is. There it is. So there is a link to it in the link tree in my bio. I had to put that in because uh, it's a little bit hard to find because Amazon just released it today. So uh, the um, keyword algorithm isn't all there yet. Questions from my ex-boyfriend. My ex-boyfriend and I still talk on the daily, okay. Uh, yeah, so anybody who wants to get the perfect play, the link to that is in the link tree in my bio. So use that to go find it on Amazon. Which your books do you recommend for men? The perfect play. This is my first book for men. This is my first book for men. I love it. You guys are amazing. Remember to drink your water today. Cute top. Thank you. I like it. I like it. Any do's and don'ts when it comes to posting on social media? Um, so be, listen, like, like what you were doing before you got into a relationship is what you continue to do if you choose to do so. Uh, like it, nobody has the right to come into a relationship with you and say, okay, so now that I'm here, this is how you need to change, right? You don't have the right to say that to somebody. They don't have the right to say that to you. So, you know, my thing is we don't get into relationships to change, to change people. Be you. If somebody gets in a relationship with you and says, by the way, you can't do that anymore. Your reply is, this is what I was doing before we got into a relationship. If you don't like who I am, then this is not the right relationship for you. Did you not do your due diligence before getting into a relationship? Did you not observe who I was? Did you not accept me before committing to me? If you did, then continue to accept me. If you did you not accept me before committing to me? If you did, then did you accept me before to me? If you did you not accept me before committing to me? If you did, then continue to tell me what to do. I'm here to tell you, you're off on that one. You misinformed yourself. I am an independent person. I have my own decisions to make. You're not my parent. Didn't we use to link? What is the link? Who are you? I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. Can the perfect play or fix that shit be a book read by a couple at the same time? So the perfect play is written from me to men on how men can get into a relationship with us. What turns our crank? Um, so the fix that shit for men is going to be the male version of fix that shit for women so that each of you can have your own copy and do your work. Can you give us a synopsis? Yes, I feel like I know uh, what there is to know about dating. Do you know about the no kissing for three months dating rule? Do you know what happens when you kiss somebody? Do you know why you want to use a no kissing for three months dating rule? So this is the difference between me and other dating coaches. Uh, first of all, I'm not single. What the fuck? What the fuck is with single dating coaches? Like that just blows my mind. I'm sorry. Um, you know, you're, you're going to teach us how to cook, but you don't know how to cook. Uh, so that one blows my mind a little bit. So first of all, um, I know what it takes to be successful at getting into a relationship. If, if you want to learn how to date to not get in a relationship, then follow the advice of somebody who's not in a relationship because they don't yet understand the nuances of having a successful relationship. Um, obviously because if they did, they would be in one. Um, so that's one of the differences is that I really understand the nuances of getting into a relationship, including vetting. This is what other dating coaches are not teaching. They're not teaching a proper vetting technique. 
Um, so that's one thing that you're going to learn with um, the perfect play is really how you should be vetting, what you should be looking for, how you can be interesting. What is the number one thing that's attractive to us? By the way, it's not money. That's not it. I can be very controlling. I don't know how to fix it. If you want to fix that, do come get coaching. I would love to see around dating, new big picture sociological phenomenon trends. So The Perfect Play is a book for men on how to date. So if you're interested in that, the button for that is in the link to my bio. It takes you to the Amazon page where you can purchase it. Would the perfect play have 12 character traits? Yes, they are in there. Also the seven qualities I need to look for in a woman. So the 12 character traits, I do, I, 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 I teach them. I say, what's a man? This is what you need to be to be defined as a man. Absolutely, I teach them that. Is it normal after 20 years of a joint account when spouse starts making way more and ends the joint? Um, it's okay. So normal or not, it's okay if somebody wants to do that. Just got my book in today, hoping for a change. Yes, do what's in the book, my love. Do follow the instructions. Don't just read the book. This is a guide. It's a manual. You got to follow the instructions. It's like, it's like you're getting an Ikea bookshelf, right? It, you, you can't just, you know, receive the box and go, okay, shelf. Mm -mm. You got to put the work in and put the pieces together and create the shelf. How do I stop being so dependent on my man? I have a book combo for you. So custom made and fix that shit right here. So custom made and fix that shit. These are the two books that teach you how to be more independent, how to have a healthier relationship. Um, so this one is gonna teach you self-love, independence, uh, how to manage your emotions, not have an overabundance of stress, fear, and anxiety, which is what makes you seem like you're dependent on him. And then custom made is going to help you fill up your time. This is going to tap you into your purpose and your passion and light up your fire. Like you're going to get up every day going, oh, I can't wait to get into my thing, right? Instead of getting up every day and going, where's my good morning text? So custom made and fix that shit. This was needed. Do, 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 do. Is there any way to stop being jealous and upset of your ex moving on with someone else? Yes, grab No More Assholes. Do what's in that book to focus on yourself and your self-love. And that's you being in the moment and building yourself up and do what's in this book to define your next relationship and start getting out there and finding that person. So this, instead of looking backward and like poking yourself in the eye because you're looking backward at your ex, you're gonna come present into the moment, build yourself up and start moving towards your future. Ah, this is cute. I always get a lot out of your info, but your top is the bomb. Where did you get it? Uh, so Le Chateau, of course, Le Chateau. Le Chateau. I just ordered custom made. Thank you. And once I finish it, I'll be ordering fix that shit. Oh, my love. I'm excited for you. So super excited. My angel. Love your next move. What's my next move? What is my next move? Do, 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 do. Uh, in case you're hitting on me, just so you know, I do block people who hit on me. Do, do, do. Is it a red flag if my boyfriend has girls on his Snapchat? If he keeps making new friends, absolutely. Absolutely. And if you don't meet his friends, absolutely. If they're platonic friends, there's no reason for you to not meet them. There's no reason for him to not introduce you as his girlfriend. I'm ordering fix that shit next time I get paid. Love it. 
How to not dismiss my girlfriend's strong emotions. Uh, get fix that shit. Read it together. Girlfriend treats me like an Uber. Does she not? Is she not reciprocal in any way, shape, or form? Do you agree the world would be a better place if it would be under the rule of the West? I don't know what that means. Somebody got in trouble. Just ended things today, sad. Air hug. I'm sending you a virtual hug. Uh, would friends from college resurfacing be something to worry about with a partner? It all depends. Uh, all depends. All it depends on their integrity. All depends on the strength of your relationship. All depends on what kind of relationship they had. If there was any residual feelings. Should I try to fix a man or move on? Never try to fix a man. You can focus on yourself. Like my relationship was not going well and I focused on myself and I fixed myself. And our relationship got better as a result because I was creating a lot of problems in my relationship. But if he's the problem, like he's flirting with other girls, um, he doesn't like to go to work, right? Uh-uh, goodbye. How do you know if your wife respects you as a man? That's a good question. That's a good question. Um, she doesn't pick fights with you. I get so jealous when my man texts any female that isn't family. How do I improve on that? Uh, so you can start with meditation. You can read Fix That Shit. Um, use that to uh, learn how to calm your emotions and resist your impulses to uh, vomit this insecurity into the relationship. You can come take my No More Insecurity program. Does my boyfriend always have to tell me where he's going? No, because you're not his mom. Uh, I think it's weird when he doesn't want to tell. So there's a difference between not feeling the need to, you know, touch base with you every time he goes to go do something. Hey, I'm going there. Hey, I'm leaving now. I'm going here. Hey, I'm leaving now. I'm going here. Hey, I'm leaving now. I'm going here. There's a difference between not not wanting to do that, like not wanting to be parented um, or being unwilling to tell you where he goes. There's a really big difference. How do I suggest my wife watch your TikToks without sounding rude? Start sending her the ones you know she's going to like. Uh, start sending her the ones you know she's going to like. Da -da -da. My boyfriend is depressed and never wants to leave his room to see me. How do I help without being overwhelming? Why do you want to be in a relationship with somebody who does not manage life, does not manage their mental, um, their mental health, doesn't manage their behaviors? Why do you want to be in that relationship? What's all the book names? Is there a list available? So I wrote eight books. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so if you go to Amazon and you type in Chantal Hyde, you're going to see, uh, most of my books. Um, yes. Okay. I'm opening, I'm opening it up, my love. Uh, so I just opened up the request for guests for guests. So, um, pop yourself in there. Uh, so the books that I wrote are Comeback Queen. That's the book that helps you get over a breakup. Comeback Queen helps you get over a breakup. No More Assholes helps you choose the right partner the next time. After the first kiss gets you started into your relationship so that it sticks. 
Fix that shit helps you resolve all the conflicts so there is zero, zero, I didn't stutter, zero fighting in your relationship. Custom made helps you stop being codependent by tapping you into your purpose so that you have something you want to do so that you're not always looking to your partner to entertain you. Dating 101 is the book that is a textbook. There's no swearing, so parents can get this for their teenagers so that they don't need no more assholes and fix that shit one day because they chose an amazing partner. Fake Love Need Not Apply is How to Avoid Posers, Losers, Scammers, and Predators. This is a free ebook. If you hit that free book button in the link tree in my bio and say as to goodness is how to be happy, like happy, happy. Um, scent, good, good, good. And then there's a new one that just came out today. I'm gonna show you the cover. You're gonna find this on Amazon. This is for men. This is a dating book for men. So this is for single men on how to find the right woman. If you hit the link tree in my bio, you'll see the first button is the dating book for men. It's gonna take you to Amazon, so you can go get that book if you want it. Who's getting the perfect play? It literally came out today. Who's gonna go get that book? Scent, good, good, good. That top is amazing, isn't it? I love it. Fire. Hey, from Houston. Maybe they fell into a depression. Yes. Hi. Hi. So your boyfriend isn't leaving his room. Yeah, so we were living together and he got severely depressed when he switched over to the overnight shifts. And about two months into it, we started arguing, or we were arguing those two months. And then he decided it would be healthier for us if he moved out and in with his parents. I was trying to be open with it. I have been, um, but it's seeming very odd. Like I'm feeling extremely neglected. And when I talk to him about it, um, he seems to be on the same page, but he's just so depressed. He doesn't leave his room unless he has work. Right. And so and I have to when, put in extra effort for like, it's like seeming extremely like exhausting almost. And I don't want to give up on him because he's fathering my child, but it's kind of, it's just getting really a lot. Right. Um, so, and this happened because he switched over to night shift, which means he's not getting his sleep. Right. So he's, he's awake when everybody else is asleep. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, that is hard on the brain to, you know, not have a, a normal sleep cycle. Um, so that does have an effect on your brain, but he needs to address himself. Right. Um, and, and so that's, that's part of the, the thing is that if people don't manage their own mental health, we can't take it on our shoulders to try and make them better. We can't, right? You, you can't fix him. You can't make him better. What you can do is not fight with him and just take a step back and say, look, I'm detached, not, not necessarily to him, but say to yourself, I'm detaching my emotional roller coaster from your ride. I'm not writing your ups and downs. I'm maintaining my own mental health, which you need to do because you're a mama, right? Yes. So you have to detach from his emotional ride. You have to detach from his ups and downs. You have to let him take care of himself. Let him take care of his sleep. Let him take care of his son. But you can't take care of him. He needs to take care of his business. You need to focus on taking care of yourself. Because here's the thing about you riding his emotional roller coaster. If we, if he goes down and you go down with him, he goes down further and stays down longer before coming back up. If you maintain yourself when he takes a dip, he goes down and then he comes back up. So he doesn't go down as low. He comes back up faster because there's somebody up here waiting for him. And that's the communication you need to have with him is I love you, but I can't take care of you because I need to take care of me because I need to be in a good state of mind for our son. Here's some suggestions and I'm going to give you, do you have pen and paper? Um, I can grab some. Give me one second. Okay. 
I'm going to give you some things to suggest to him to do. Say, here are some things that you can do to get yourself feeling better. But whether okay. or not he does them are up to him. Okay, I'm ready. So he needs to take vitamin D minimum 4,000 units a day. Minimum? Minimum. Okay. Uh, 5 HTP. HTB? HTP. P is a Peter. Yeah. Okay. 5 HTP. So this helps his body produce more serotonin. Serotonin is the body's natural happy chemical. Okay. Uh, he needs to start meditating. He needs to get in 20 minutes a day. Because this is going to help him sleep better. Okay. I don't know that he'll... I think he would be interested in the other two. I don't know that he would be interested in the meditation. So here's the thing. It's going to help him sleep better. Yeah, he does. So when he does sleep, he wakes up like every hour or every two hours. And then it's extremely hard to get back to sleep. Then he's awake yeah. for another hour. And it, it's just getting out of control like he doesn't even eat anymore so he's and he's stressing about the lack of sleep and the lack of sleep is stressing him out and then he's stressing about the lack of sleep meditation is going to help him sleep better 20 minutes okay. of meditation is like taking a nap because okay. it rests the brain he needs to rest his brain he's he's putting himself in an increasingly anxious state he needs to start resting his brain so is should he be doing like a guided meditation since I don't think he would be like know what to do really since he doesn't so, really do that kind of stuff. Uh switch him over to my YouTube channel. So if he goes to YouTube and types in Canada's dating coach. Okay. And uh he's going to find my channel. I have a let's meditate playlist. I have a little video tutorial on how to meditate. I've got a ton of meditation tracks in there, including guided meditations. Okay. So he can start there on my YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah, I'm hoping this will help because, I mean, I've been in toxic relationships my entire life until I met him. And it was like a complete 180 opposite. It's crazy and so now that this has hit us you know after being together for so long the depression it's I mean it's definitely been hard to deal with to say the least but yeah I'm hoping we so, can figure it out because I mean at least minimally for the benefit of our kids so absolutely um another thing he needs to do is eat whole foods Whole foods. He eats like yeah. only fast food. That needs to change immediately. Okay. His fast food needs to come from a pita place. And he has to put, like, pick whatever meat he wants and put every single vegetable on that pita and then whatever sauce he wants. That's what needs to be his fast food. Okay. Yeah, I... I think it's like purely out of convenience that it's just so happens to be on the way to work. And he, like I said, he doesn't even leave his room to cook or do anything. Yeah. So um, somebody's at my door. I'm going to let you go, but thank you so okay. much for taking me live and giving me advice. You're welcome. Bye lovely. Bye. What's wrong with fast food? The food that you eat has an effect on your physical body. It, it affects your chemical makeup. Um, so, you know, I used to smoke pot. I still occasionally, but I used to do it pretty regular. What I notice is if I eat junk food, it knocks me out. If my diet is whole foods, I can't smoke enough to knock myself out. I can't smoke enough to make myself stupid. My brain is operating at full effect. Um, so if you eat bad food, your brain shuts down. It doesn't function properly. Your serotonin levels become depleted. This puts you into a depression. If you eat whole foods, 
your brain functions at an optimal level, your serotonin levels are running at an optimal level. Uh, if I have a down day, my checklist is have I had some vitamin D and what have I eaten lately? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, somebody said a homie needs to hit the gym too. I was going to say, uh, go for a walk, um, you know, at least a 10 minute walk every day to get the body moving, get more oxygen into the body because oxygen reduces inflammation and depression and anxiety is inflammation in the brain. Darfolk, what's your question, my love? Hola from Mexico. I got mine today. Love it. Love that you don't give toxic advice. Thank you. I appreciate that. Congrats on the new book. Thank you. Thank you. You're Connor Maddie's boyfriend? Who's Connor Maddie? Uh, do you believe two people can walk together if they do not uh, work together if they do not agree? If they, you can have disagreements about values, but not fundamental values. You can you can have different uh, opinions on things as long as you respect each other. Boyfriend seems to have given up on our four year relationship because it's too much work for him. Why give up? I don't know why he gave up. Just finished my workout and my mood and emotions are already more calm. Love it. I want to ask about a recent dating experience. What's what's the question, my love? What is the question? What is the question? Somebody asked a follow-up question about, um, so initially they had a joint bank account and now somebody's making more money and they no longer want to have a joint bank account. So to start off with, a joint bank account is not a requisite. It's not like when you get in a relationship, you must have a joint bank account. It is a choice. Somebody can make the choice to take part in a joint bank account. Somebody can make the choice to not take part in a joint bank account. Somebody can choose to have a joint bank account and then choose to no longer have a joint bank account. It is their choice. Um, so that's why I, I say that's okay because it is our choice. If I, you know, started a joint bank account with my husband, whatever my income level was, and at any point decided I no longer wanted to do it, that's my choice. I get to do that. If he started a joint bank account with me and whatever income he was, at some point he decided to stop doing it, that's his choice to do that. My thoughts on prenups? I have a prenup. I have a prenup. Uh, signed a prenup uh, before I got married to my husband. I knew he would want one as soon as he proposed. I said, I bet you want a prenup. And we went ahead and got that. Um, I made less money than he did at the time. I make really good money now. Um, I'm, I'm happy to have a prenup. I would have been completely fine having a prenup, even if I make considerably less money, because I know I'm always okay. Um, you know, it's, it's nice to be in this relationship. If I wasn't in this relationship, I would be looking after myself. So I didn't get into this relationship to have somebody look after me or to have somebody look after me after this relationship is over. Our prenups say what's mine is mine, what's yours is yours. So, you know, listen, I have I have this business, what's mine is mine. I get to keep what I make from my business. If we were to separate, it's still all mine. I don't have to give any of it away. I had a guy fall so fast and asked me to be his girlfriend so fast. Oh, yes, come. Let's do that. Let's do that, dear folk. So, so we're having a little hi hi so you had a guy fall so fast and asked you to be his girlfriend so fast 
So how long were you guys dating for before he fell in love? It was it was so random because it was like um, maybe f- five dates before he asked me to be his girlfriend, which okay. is which in the space of like two weeks. But like he was very much like um, flowers, weekends away. Like it was all kind of very over the top. But the entire time we were together, there were fights like big fights so it actually all ended this weekend because he got quite abusive but I was reading quite a lot about it about um people that are addicted to the kind of like the love thing but I've I've followed you for a while I've been single I was with someone for eight years but I've been single for three years and I'm not a massively comfortable data but the last two situations where I've been in, it's followed the same pattern. And I've kind of been like, oh, you know, just open up, go with it, do do what you think. But it's ended in the same way. So what what's yeah. that about? You're not using a no kissing for three months dating rule. No. Exactly. What what is the addiction that they have? <laughs> What is the addiction that they have? Who cares? Yeah. See, that question is irrelevant because that question doesn't help you. That question has nothing to do with your growth, evolution, safety, and your ability to get into a healthy, loving, long-term relationship. That question, why are they like that? Why are they why do they do that? Is irrelevant because that doesn't help you. The question should be. How can I make sure this doesn't happen to me again? Yeah, totally. Agree. And obviously that's a big part of it, waiting. Using the no kissing for three months dating rule? How, like, from the day you met him to the day of your first fight with him, how long did that take? Four days. So would he have lasted three months without a kiss? The thing is, if if he hadn't have moved so quickly, I would never have agreed to any of it. But it was almost like you whipped up into a whirlwind, aren't you? You know? If you let yourself, right? If you don't create a boundary, time yeah. and space, right? No kissing for three months is a time and space boundary. Yeah. I don't know you. I need time to get to know you. I need space to get to know you. You can't get to know somebody if they're constantly in your face. You can't get to know them because if a red flag pops up, it is superseded by the next moment. It's it's like, it's like, oh, red flag. Oh, here comes the next moment. Oh, here comes the next moment. Here's and it gets pushed, it gets pushed away, away, away. But if you take space at the end of the day, right? It's two o'clock in the morning. He's at your house watching a movie. You, you look at him, you say, you have to go now. And you kick him out. No, it's too late. No, no, no. You have to go. Well, I've had some drinks. Call an Uber. You have to go. Well, it's too far to my house. I drove an hour to get here. Get a hotel room. You have to go. You kick them out at the end of the day. And then what happens is your brain starts going through all those moments. Those moments start coming back. And then that red flag comes back. And you go, oh, oh, yeah, that. And you start thinking about that. Don't let somebody sweep you off your feet. Yeah. Don't let somebody scare you into kissing them. Well, if you don't kiss me, there's uh, there's there's options, right? Fuck, I love that word. A man, a, a high value man has options. Here's what you can do with your options, motherfucker. <laughs> we don't care about your yeah. options. Go get your options. Go get your options. Go yeah. get your options. You want to say that? If he says that, if you say I'm using a no kissing, no sleepovers, no sex for for three months dating rule, well, nobody's going to wait around for that. You know, men have a lot of options. Bye. Bye. The guy who and, says that and is a with instant- your husband, you, you used your rule with your husband, didn't you? Accidentally, because I was actually married when I first met him. I was a stripper in a strip club. He was coming to see me for two and a half years. So accidentally we used it, but then we broke up a few times and I used it on purpose. Okay. 
and Thank nobody you. nobody who was interested in me and by the way let me tell you the two men that i dated who were interested in me were 12 out of 12 on the 12 character traits they they had it all there was no reason to not kiss them the only reason i didn't kiss them was because i was using the no kissing for three months dating role and my husband swooped in and won me back each time yeah you're an amazing woman thank you you're welcome thank you bye are you, are you reading no more assholes yet yeah yeah good 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 follow that no kissing rule i will see you later okay. bye Love the accent. I have an iron. What? I'm a goodbye, love, love. Thanks for the live. I hope you make more books for men. Start with the first one. Fix that shit for men is coming out. Listen, learn, and do. Thank you. Hi from Brazil. My friend found out that his brother cheated on his wife of eight years. What should he do? Um, he should, he should let her know he's he, this, she's her, her physical health is in danger, right? She thinks that she has chosen somebody who is not going to put her physical health in danger by doing things with other people that can infect her with something. Uh, she is wrong. She should know what is happening, right? She should have the opportunity to protect herself against somebody who is not caring for her physical health. Do, 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 do. Why are most women concerned about prenups? Because we're concerned about fairness, right? We're, we're just concerned about fairness. Um, if you carried a baby, you would be concerned about a prenup. That's, that's all I can say about that. If you carried a baby, you would be, you would want a prenup because it, it takes a toll on a woman's body. Um, and you just, you just have no idea. You have no idea how much it, it, it can set us back. And that's the thing about prenups. I'm not just like, sign whatever he says uh-uh no 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 it first of all you need to be with a partner who's generous and fair you need to be generous and fair you need to pick someone who's generous and fair a prenup needs to be generous and fair guys who wants a notification when i go live say i do that was awesome thank you I love when people come live, yes. How do I make my ex want to come back? Is it for the, if it's for the right reasons, no contact? Uh, it all depends, love. Uh, so this is one of those things, this is like an individual thing. I need a lot of details in order to help you out on that. So if you wanted to figure that out, do get a coaching session. Anybody who wants um, a coaching session to uh, clarify something in their lives, get a plan, you know, understand which way they should go and get their plan for moving forward. You can find the button to that in the link to my bio. It's the coaching button. She, she's definitely not taking that advice. I, <laughs> we will see. We will see. What do you do when they constantly keep making everything your problem? You eliminate, you make them speechless, right? You eliminate their ability to make it your problem. So if you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you and this is what's going on in your relationship, get fixed that shit and put an end to it. If you're with a selfish short-term thinker and the relationship, get a generous long-term thinker and start doing the right things in that relationship. How tough is it to keep a prospective partner around with the no kissing rule? It is easy, easy when they have integrity, intent, and desire for you. Integrity means I mean it when I say I'm looking for a relationship and you are interesting to me. Intent is I intend 
to get into a long-term relationship. And this thing about getting to know you first makes sense to me because I'm too intelligent to get into a relationship with a complete stranger and hope it works out. And desire. Listen, if you stand out for them, more people, that's the thing. The two men that I dated saw me, had a conversation with me and went, ooh, there's something about that girl. And that's the one you want to get into a relationship with. The person who says, ooh, there's something about you that makes you different from anybody else I've talked to. I feel differently towards you. I think differently about you. There's something about you that makes you stand out. For those people, doing the no kissing for three months is not an issue because they are intelligent, they are patient, they have impulse control, they intend to get into a long-term relationship, that's what they want. And they look at you and they go, yeah, there's something about you. I'm willing to do this. Do you cover childhood trauma? Yes. Is getting married to Vegas a bad idea? No, it's no different than getting married in a city hall, which is where I got married. Um, it's just city hall plus entertainment. Not a bad idea. Nothing wrong with that. What if neither of you want or are planning on having children together? Great. That's the relationship I have with my husband. Sign the prenup. What's yours is yours. What's theirs is theirs. There's no problem with that. Oh, she had an accent. Yes. Me. Okay, those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture up here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up. In the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell when you do that. Say, I just did. I want to date multiple guys, but how do I find them on dating sites? Online, my love. I'm going to be a weird rule to enforce as a man. Um, so here's the thing. Like there are selfish short-term thinkers in men and in women. And you will find that there are girls who are going to say, oh, I can't wait three months for a first kiss. And you're like, okay, you know, you don't have to, but that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not kissing somebody until I've known them for three months because I really want to choose a long-term committed relationship and I want to know somebody a little bit before I choose them for that partner and I understand that a kiss seals the deal on a relationship um so I'm just I'm just not going to seal the deal on someone I don't know and then hope you know for the best um I don't want us to get so invested in each other before we realize we're not right for each other. If that's not something you want to do, that's okay. Like, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just letting you know, this is how I'm choosing a partner. My partner and I, and I decided to take a break. How can I make it productive? Uh, refix that shit, my love. Start doing what's in fix that shit so that if you guys come back together, you understand how to have a functional relationship. You talk about your past relationships. How do you communicate that openly with your partner? There's no reason to go in depth about your past relationships with your partner. So you can, you know, like, like however it might apply to the conversation, but you don't need to go in depth about it. You know, the, the past is the past. The present is where you want to be and then planning towards the future with optimism. If you're dating someone, how long do you think it should, you should wait till you meet their friends? So 
usually no kissing for three months January rule. Don't kiss them until you've met their people. If they don't include you in their life, then it's too early to kiss them. If they if they're if they're so unsure about you that they don't want to introduce you to their friends yet, don't kiss them. Like don't kiss them. Don't kiss somebody and hope you become friends. Don't kiss somebody and hope they will include you in their life. Don't kiss somebody and hope the two of you are compatible. These are all things that should line up before you kiss them if you want a long-term committed relationship. Do you want to be in a relationship with somebody who shows you to their friends? Then have him show you to his friends before you kiss them. Don't kiss them until that happens. Know who he is. Be included in his life. See who his friends are because this is part of your vetting process. So maybe just the two of you get to know each other for a month or two. But between month two and month three, if he's not introducing you to his friends, he's not including you in his life. If he can't say, this is my friend, don't kiss him. The best relationships are with your best friend. So don't hope you're going to become best friends after you've kissed them. Become friends. Solidify that you guys can actually be friends and then kiss your friend. Why aren't I attracted to guys who seem to care too much? Uh, maybe you're just not noticing how confident they are. Haven't seen him in a month. I was headed over five minutes away. He told me not to come because he needed an app. I don't see a question, my love. I have a hard time with reactivity. Do you have any advice on how to better manage emotions? Yes. You have to dive in to fix that shit. This is the book on conflict resolution, how to reduce your own emotions, soothe yourself, not be reactive, not vomit into the relationship. Um, so this is like fix that shit is the book that's going to help you navigate that. You just released a book for men. Tell us more. Tell us more. Guys, who wants to see the cover for The Perfect Play? The book came out today on Amazon. Does it mean he didn't care because I was already there and he told me no? Do you feel like he cared for you? How should I let a man know I want to get married soon? Tell him what your timeline is. Hey, I've been doing some thinking about my life and, and how I want to plan it out. And I want to be married by this time. I want to be engaged by this time. Uh, what's your timeline? Who wants to see the cover for The Perfect Play? My newest book on Amazon. This is number nine. Number nine. I can't believe I wrote nine books. Um, so this is a book that teaches men how to get into relationships with women like me, women like us. No, I don't feel like you care. I'm hoping to book a session with you soon. Yes, lovely. Let's talk about this. Let's do an assessment. I liked your videos. I think that you're very pretty. Uh, thinking that I'm pretty can be considered cheating on my wife. So here's the thing. Uh, now you are, right? Just thinking thoughts are not cheating. Behaviors are cheating. Now you want me to know that you come pretty. And the question is, why? Why do you want me to know that? What is the point of that? What is the point of, of you who are in a relationship telling another woman who is in a relationship that you find her attractive? Like, what is the point of that? The person you should be complimenting is the one you are in a relationship with. My husband will not be complimenting another woman. That is not his code of conduct. His ethics say, mm -mm, that's not okay. That's not what you do. He... So what's the point, my friend? Because that was overstepping right there. That was disrespecting your relationship. That was disrespecting my relationship. You and your husband's story sounds pretty unique. Can you break that down for us? Why, well, yes, I can. Mitchell. Um, so, oh my God, 2004, 2003, 
my husband walked into a strip club and he saw me uh walked past five girls to come and get me after my show come and asked me for a dance took me for a dance couldn't get me off his mind came back the next night asked me out to dinner i was wearing my wedding rings at the time i said and i was wearing them because uh my husband at the time didn't know i was i was wearing my wedding rings on the floor and when he found out he said oh you need to take them off you'll make more money i was like oh um okay i, I liked wearing them uh so he came to see me for two and a half years he was my customer for two and a half years uh i eventually realized that the relationship that i had with my husband was not healthy uh we were sleeping in separate bedrooms um barely ever had sex ever uh and so eventually i came to realize that i was in a platonic friendship but this should not be a marriage and so i divorced my first husband and then got into a relationship with who is my now husband Good morning. Good morning. Is it bad being called low maintenance by a boyfriend? No. My husband, if you ask him what's his favorite thing about me, he says I'm easy. That's a goal, to not be a stressor on your partner's life. When you are not stressing your partner out, they are more productive. So low maintenance is good. Being easy is good. Being easy to love. How do I ask a guy if he wants kids one day without scaring them off? You ask them on the first date. The first time you see each other face to face, you say, hey, uh, I just want to let you know, I'm done my playtime. I'm really looking for a committed long-term relationship because I want to get married. I want to have two kids one day. You know, I want to buy a house. I want to do some traveling with my future partner. What about you? Scare them off. If they don't want kids, scare them off before you like them. Scare them off before you like them. So guys, men, where are my men's at? Do you feel like you ever emotionally cheated on said ex-husband? I fell in love and I didn't even know it. Um, so I'd say yes. I'd say yes. Uh, I definitely fell in love and I didn't, I didn't know it. Uh, I didn't realize until, uh, you know, after my husband and I actually got into a relationship and we went back to the club to um, just sort of like repeat the, um, you know, sort of the scene, the scene. And I was feeling this way towards him and I'd been feeling this way for a long time, but because I never, you know, that was the first time I made the association of like me being there and feeling that way and me being with him and feeling that way. And I went, Oh my God, I've been in love with you for so long. I didn't realize it. So I totally did. Our, our marriage was absolutely susceptible because of the lack of intimacy. And I would have a conversation with my husband, like every two months I'd have a, like a deep conversation. I'd be like, we need to fix this. This isn't okay. This isn't normal. So here's my new book, guys. Here's the latest one. This is the one that was just released on Amazon today. So this is the dating book for men. So uh, ladies, if you know a single man, you want to help him get into a good relationship, that's the book. What makes me an expert? The fact that I know what I'm talking about and I am successful at what I'm teaching people what to do. So if somebody makes millions of dollars a year, are they an expert in teaching other people on how to make millions of dollars a year? Exactly. If somebody is a fantastic cook, are they an expert on teaching people how to cook? Any advice in opening up conversations with somebody that's very limited with words? Just create emotional security in the relationship. And when they talk, don't interrupt you know, just make listening noises. Don't follow it up with 20 questions because that shuts them down, right? It's like, you know, it's frustrating to talk if it if it feels like it always turns into an exercise, um, right? So what I do with my husband is when he talks, I just make listening noises. Um, and I might say, oh, how, do you, how did you feel about that? 
And that's it. I don't ask a lot of questions. I let him choose what he wants to say, how he needs to say it. And I just keep giving him space to talk into. So that means he might say something and then I just make some listening noises, but I don't say anything in response. And so there's this silence. And then lo and behold, he might say something else. It might take him some time, but because there's a silence and another thought popped up in his head, he'll say the next thing. So what that's called is creating safe space for dialogue. It's just, it's, it's sort of like opening the floor up and giving him space to talk into. Do you have a book on relationship and security or insecurity? Yes, it's fix that shit, my love. 100% it's fix that shit. Is it unreasonable that my family is uncomfortable with me going to a guy's house alone who like you don't know them well or they don't know him well? How long have you been dating him for or seeing him for? How long have you known him for? Can we read the new book? Yay. If you have to tell him how to love you, is it worth it? Uh, come get a coaching session because there's a lot, you know, this is a particular situation. I would need to unpack what is actually happening as a behaviorist. This amount of information doesn't tell me anything. I need to get a lot more information in order to help you in your situation. So if you do want to gain some clarity in a plan, um, some understanding of what you, you should be doing, uh, come get an assessment, get yourself a coaching session, go to my bio, click on the link tree, click that coaching button, follow the three steps to book yourself in and get yourself in for a session. Hello from I Ireland. I love it. I don't know. Well, well of course they're concerned. Of course they're concerned. You know, you don't know them. So don't go over. Don't, don't do that. Don't put yourself in a situation that may potentially be unsafe because you don't know this person well. Ex's friend DM me. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. I can't, I can't read into people without uh, assessing them without, you know, getting information about them. I have no idea. Does come back and touch on insecurity? Uh, it, it does touch on insecurity. It touches on rebuilding uh, your self-esteem, rebuilding your confidence, uh, getting you feeling better about yourself, getting you confident about getting back into the dating world. Yes. Yeah. How can I help motivate my spouse to help with more chores? I feel overwhelmed at times. Uh, so really like take 30 days um, to uh, note everything that's paid for, like everything that gets paid for and everything that gets done and by who. Um, and then after those 30 days, you know, uh, take a look at who's paying what and who's doing what and see what the discrepancy is in terms of, um, you know, the percentage, like if you're paying a certain percent of like, say you're, you're paying 50% of the household bills, but you're doing 80% of the chores, then you need to go to your partner after you've done this 30 day assessment and say, Hey, like I've noticed that I'm paying 30 or like 50% of the expenses of the home, but I'm doing 80% of the work. I need you to take over your 30% of the work. You can hire a housekeeper to do your 30% or I pay 30% less of the financial burden. And then you, my love, with your savings of you paying less, you can hire somebody uh, to help you with the household chores, but it, it needs to come out even. Um, so I don't, I don't know if you guys have kids or not, but parenting is 100-100. Uh, the financial burden and the physical burden, that's divided equally. That needs to be split equally. What makes me say three months no kissing rule? Why that specific time? So there's a honeymoon period. Typically, the honeymoon period lasts about three months. The honeymoon period is a chemical high. 
that that happens when two people come together this this chemical high this excitement that you feel between text messages between visits after the first time you meet them and the second time you meet them in between that time that that excitement that you feel is mother nature saying hey procreate and and how about this one um and so you know she makes you excited about a certain person they so they stand out right so you go into a chemical high onto one person and that's your your biological body saying okay time to procreate how long your sessions they last an hour um but that's an escalation of your chemicals but you didn't introduce phenylethylamine that's the kiss chemical so everybody's list lips to create a chemical called phenylethylamine that doesn't do anything to you until it comes in contact with another set of lips Phenylethylamine is that combination. It's an aphrodisiac. It's an amphetamine. It's an antidepressant. So you will go into a chemical high, but you're not out of your mind. So no kissing means, yeah, you're excited by them, but you're not out of your mind. You're not stupid. You haven't gone into a stupid mode. Um, if you introduce the kiss chemical, game over. You are now in stupid mode. And I'm talking to women. I'm not talking to males. Because males have a 24-7 fertility cycle. Women have a two-day-a-month fertility cycle. The KISS chemical doesn't have the same effect on the male brain as it does on the female brain. We will kiss somebody, and then the next day somebody says, can I take you out? And we say, no, I'm seeing someone. If you go to my Instagram channel, go on my IGTV, first video. There's a male dating coach just put out a book, how to teach, how to teach guys how to get into a relationship. So he's not talking about a no kissing for three months dating role. And I had him, I had him live on my Instagram. I said, if you, if you kiss a girl, like you're, you're dating, you're looking for somebody. If you kiss a girl today and you have a, a, a date with someone else in two days, will you kiss her too? And he goes, yeah. And I said, we don't do that. You, no big deal. Kisses, no big deal. Us, kisses, big deal. And it's that chemical that puts us into an altered state. The high without the kiss, cocaine. The high with the kiss, heroin. It messes us up. It makes us think we know everything we need to know. Do you know why? Because we introduce an aphrodisiac, an amphetamine, and an antidepressant. We think they're amazing because we feel amazing after those kisses. And we tell ourselves we feel that amazing because of who he is. Bullshit. It's not about who he is. It's the fact that he planted a chemical on your lips that put you in into, into an altered state. That's it. You, he's not amazing because he's amazing. He's amazing because of the chemical that's introduced in your body that had an effect on your brain. So no kissing for three months means no missing red flags for three months. So don't you say to kiss someone five seconds, two times per day. Kiss your partner. Your partner not the stranger that you should be vetting before choosing for a partner. If you use a no kissing for three months dating rule, the caliber of partner that you choose is much higher because you've chosen somebody based on knowledge. Now you get into that relationship and you keep the spark alive by kissing at least twice a day for a minimum five seconds each until the day you die. And we do that for both of us because the chemicals in the kiss are an aphrodisiac and an amphetamine and an antidepressant. And so you feel good together every single day. I'm now worried that I kiss my partner too soon. What do I do? Do you know if he's a selfish short-term thinker or a generous long-term thinker? You can still grab no more assholes and assess him on the 12 character traits in there. We got into an argument and I left and now that I've calmed down, I wanna make things right. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna think about what you need to take responsibility for. What are the behaviors that you need to take responsibility for? You're gonna craft a three-part apology for those behaviors, every single one. Don't leave the person with the opportunity to say, yeah, but because you left something out because your ego didn't want to acknowledge it. You have to leave them speechless. Part number one is I'm sorry for all the behaviors you need to take responsibility for. 
Part number two, I realized that what is the emotional outcome? Again, leave them speechless. Don't leave them with the impression that you don't understand. State it all. Part number three, this is my plan for not doing this again. If you come to them with this three-part apology, it opens up and facilitates the conversation and now you become solution-oriented. You're welcome, lovely. If our relationship is in danger, if we have nothing in common, but we love each other. Uh, so what you don't have in common is morals and interests. So you're, if your fundamental values do not align, like I want to get married, so do I. I want to have kids, so do I. Um, I want to be financially responsible, so do I. I want to buy a house, so do I. I want to do lots of traveling, so do I. If your fundamental values are not aligned, definitely get out of this relationship because all you're setting yourself up for is massive fights due to unhappiness. Uh, I'm needed, but I'm not wanted. I'm needed, but not wanted. That's, I don't know what that means. Um, you know, because it should be the opposite. So somebody says, what does it mean when somebody says, I'm needed, but not wanted? Um, you know, it, ideally, it's, it's um, I don't need you. I want you, right? Guys, don't forget to go follow me on Instagram. The next coaching giveaway is going to be coming up. Love the dress. Thank you. Somebody got told my mods are on the job. Oh, there it is. You see? <laughs> That's why. That's why. Uh, let me see. My friend is worried because it's been seven months and her boyfriend hasn't said, I love you. So bad is, is that a bad sign? So anytime after six months, right? So, um, now we're getting to the point where he should know whether or not he loves her. So she can go to him and she can say, baby, do you love me? She can go ask that question. Hmm. Mitchell is saying everything's my fault toxic it depends on the context depends on the situation depends what's happening maybe the person feels blamed because you don't take responsibility for what your part is in the relationship and all you do is tell your partner how they can change but you never look at yourself and say what do I need to change to make this relationship go better? So when you are constantly going to your partner and saying, we have problems and you need to fix it, then they start feeling like you're constantly attacking them. And that is their defensive response is I'm always the problem. It's always my fault. It's always me. Okay, fine. It's always me. It's, it's always me. Okay, fine. Right? So you create frustration. Um, so I don't know what's happening. That could be why they're saying that. Uh, without me actually doing a session with you and finding out what the details are, that's all I can say about that. Thoughts on manifesting an apology after toxic breakup, even if they're blocked. Um, you, you're, you're talking about closure here. You're talking about closure. Give yourself closure. Don't manifest an apology. Give yourself the closure you need. If you have a problem with that, come to a coaching session. I can help you gain your closure. Don't move in with someone before they say I love you.
Doing the 50 I am statements from fix that shit is harder than I thought. So, and it shouldn't be, right? It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be that hard to understand 50 things about yourself that are positive. Uh, if you need help with this, come get a coaching session. This is part of elevating your confidence and self-esteem. Oh, is someone getting in trouble? He's blocked, by the way. You, you don't get, you, like, if, if you want to be disrespectful, that's okay. You get to never come here again. Um, people can ask whatever they want to ask. They can say whatever they need to say. But if the first thing out of your mouth or anything out of your mouth is disrespectful, you are removed from my environment. I do not suffer fools. We've been working on accountability. Yes. Get fixed that shit, my love. It's going to help you a lot. Uh, I think my boyfriend is going to propose, but we're 19 and 20 and I'm worried my family won't approve. Uh, it depends how long you've been together for. If you've been together for at least two years, um, you know each other well enough to know if you're a good fit. If they don't approve because your boyfriend has abusive tendencies, they are correct. They should not approve and I don't approve either. Um, if they don't approve because he's not financially responsible, they are correct. I don't approve either. You need to be with somebody who passes the 12 character traits and no more assholes. If he doesn't, say no. Don't don't get engaged to somebody who's not a man. Don't get engaged to a guy. Make sure that you are getting engaged to somebody who already shows you they have the qualities of a man. If he's a man and they disapprove, that's their problem. That's a them problem, not a you problem. If he's not a man, they should be disapproving. And I disapprove too. Come to Sweden. Okay. Uh, how does the love frequency on your meditation playlist help? Um, because every, every, like, every mode that your brain is in is a frequency. So alpha, beta, theta, these are all frequencies. So awake and alert, um, sleeping while dreaming, deep sleep, no dreams, light meditation, deep meditation. So the frequencies in the music, the binaural beats, helps pull your brain waves into a meditative frequency faster, making the time you do this more efficient. I do not suffer fools. Send tweets. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Friends keep asking me for advice. I'm like, watch this relationship, coach. Love it. I love it. He definitely is a man. Thank you so much. You're so welcome, love. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Enjoy. Hope you guys have been together for uh, at least two years. Do, 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 do. I point everyone in your direction. Use your lingo on the daily. I love it. What do you think about while meditating? Yes, I got four things. Guys, grab a, piece, grab a pen and a piece of paper. I'm going to tell you the four things that go through my mind during meditation. What are the top books you recommend as I work on myself before my next relationship? Um, anything by Harriet Lerner. Anything by Harriet Lerner. Um, fix that shit. Uh, you're saying on your way to your next relationship, uh, before my next relationship. So uh, anything by Harriet Lerner, no more assholes, fix that shit. After the first kiss, this is finding the next partner, transitioning into the relationship, making sure it's conflict free. Um, also the Celestine prophecy, super enlightening. Of yours too, yes. Can you do some videos on online dating? I'm dying here. No quality at all. Got it. Okay. So here are the four things I think about when I meditate. So 
these are in no particular order, by the way. You do these at will. That means you come back to each one as often as you want. You stay in each one for as long as you want. But there's one I start with. And the one that I start with is I surrender. By the way, anybody who wants to start meditating, there's a meditation resource button in the link tree in my bio. I also have a playlist on YouTube called Let's Meditate filled with meditation tracks. Start with track number two if you don't know where to start and wear headphones. Track number two is a 10-minute love signal. It's so super sweet. So the four things I think about is um, starting with I surrender. So inhale, quiet. So on the inhale, I just I, I just blank my mind, which is really easy to do on an in inhale because your mind is preoccupied with your body function, right? So on the inhale, you just go blank. On the exhale, you think I surrender. And while you are exhaling, just relax any part of your body that, that has any tension, like shoulders, your jawline, your thighs, your arms, just relax everything. And then just keep inhaling. Nice and quiet on the inhale and then on the exhale, I surrender. Do that until you feel antsy and you want to move on. Uh, dress. That's so cute. It's so cute. This is so awesome. These, these little white parts, it's like rubber on the fabric. It's, it has such a cool texture. Like, I really love this. Um, so the, another thing that I like to think about <laughs> during meditation is thank you for, so gratitudes. Thank you for my body. I've been living, eating, and breathing Chantal. I love this. Thank you for my body. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my mind. Thank you for my ideas. Thank you for my inspiration. Thank you for my strength. Thank you for my followers. Thank you for the people who support me. Thank you for my husband who's so good to me. Thank you for my home. Thank you for my dogs who are so healthy and happy. Thank you for absolutely anything and everything. Another one is I am. I am is affirmation slash manifestation. What that means is you are affirming what you know about yourself. You are manifesting what you want for yourself. I'm young. I am vital. I am healthy. I am strong. I am powerful. I am calm. I am content. I am rich. I am wealthy. I am protected. I am lucky. My ex doesn't post awful things about me after a breakup. Is this true feelings or just anger? Irrelevant. This is one of those questions that's a waste of time. You Life begins when you ask the right question. Let me repeat this. Life begins when you ask the right question. When you are asking the wrong question, you are chasing your tail instead of moving forward. If you want to move forward, you have to ask the right questions. People who figured out how things work did not chase their tail. They always asked the question that would enlighten the next step. So your question isn't, why is he saying things after our breakup? Your question needs to be, how do I make sure my next relationship is better than my last one? I on the ball. Stop looking at him and his behavior. Focus on you and how you will achieve what you want. <clears throat> Dating when you have, is that bipolar disorder? Um, so have, have a professional who's helping you take your meds. Um, when you get serious with somebody, say, I'd love to set you up with a session with my therapist um, so that you can become comfortable with, with what I have and they can teach you how to navigate this. Thirty-six, my boyfriend of four years doesn't want to talk about the future. We just moved in together. Should I leave? Why did you move into somebody if you didn't know where it was going, my love? Um, should I leave? So come up with your timeline. What is your plan? I want to be married by, I want to be engaged by, I want to have kids by, I want to buy a house by. What is your timeline? Figure that out. Go to him and say, baby, I want to talk to you about my, my, my life plan. I've been thinking about my life and what it is I want for myself. This is when I want to get married. This is when I want to get engaged. This is when I want to have kids. Um, what about you? And that's how you say it. This is my life plan. What about you? And let him, well, I don't want to think about that right now. 
well, maybe I need to be in a relationship with somebody where I understand that our goals and timelines are aligned. If, if you can't, uh, you know, if you don't know what your goals and timeline are, I'm thinking maybe I'm not in the right relationship because I need to be in a relationship with somebody where I understand that our goals and timelines are aligned. It's too early to be talking about this. Okay, baby, I understand that. But I just need to let you know that I need to be in a relationship with somebody who shares my goals and timeline. And I'm beginning to think that I'm in the wrong relationship. Can you talk more about like attracts like? Yes, we seek what's familiar. We seek what is familiar. We seek familiar energies. So if you're in a negative state, then you get into relationships with people who are in negative states. Um, people who are confident, don't get in relationships with people who lack confidence and are insecure and controlling because a confident person puts up with it for 0 0.05 seconds and goes, yeah, fuck off, right? Whereas somebody who is insecure ends up in a relationship with somebody who is insecure and then they get controlled by that insecure person because they don't have the confidence to say, uh, yeah, fuck off. So that's what I mean by lack of tracks like. If you want to make sure that you don't get into a toxic relationship, you need to elevate yourself above where you were, where you were tolerating that because it felt comfortable for you and it felt comfortable because it was a familiar vibration. Guys, guess who's here? Talk about jealousy, how much is too much? And any of, listen, you'll feel jealousy. Any, any vomiting is too much. Um, you might have a big jealous reaction or a small jealous reaction. But if you vomit it into your relationship, now it's too much. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Hi. Oh, is this my baby girl? I know. Oh, he's so ugly. Hi. Hello. Hello. Oh, yes, mama loves him. Yeah. That's my good boy. That's my good boy. Everybody say hi, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Is Charlie the goodest boy? Yes, I know. He's so loving. Hi. Yes, Mama loves him. Hello. He's a good boy. That's the... Oh. Yes, Charlie. Sweet Charlie. Yeah. No, he's, he's just going to chill out here. <laughs> That's our baby. Test for relationship anxiety. You can refix that shit, do what is in fix that shit, or you can come uh, take a, get a coaching session. I've been writing down notes while listening to your audiobook. Oh, that's amazing. Yes, good reminder. Uh, fix that shit is now an audiobook, guys, but you can only get it through the link tree in my bio. It is not on Audible. Um, because Audible wants 70% and I'm like, mm -mm, no, no. So this year was my timeline and he would rather leave for days instead of talk about it. So exit the relationship, love. Like your standard is I will not be in a relationship with somebody who is not on the same path as I am. I will not be in a relationship with somebody who is not on the same path as I am. Ch -ch Charlie. Charlie is a Westie Poodle. Westie and Poodle. He's such a good boy. He's just going to lay here. He might be cuddle puss. Sometimes when I do sessions, he comes and lays down beside me. Hello. My ex saw me and made his friends look at me for him and acted like he didn't see me. Weird. But so? So what? Who cares? Who cares? We are looking this way. We are not looking that way. Who cares? Whatever. Your favorite word should be whatever. You look gorgeous. Thank you. How do I have more fun and adventures with my boyfriend? That's a really good question. Um, really good question. The thing is, Google can literally help you with that. So what city are you in? Literally Google your city and say fun around 
and then that and then just l look at this over together and make a list of the kind of stuff you guys want to do and start knocking things off your list hello you guys welcome everybody do we have any newbies any newbies say i'm new Uh, any recommendations on a book to learn to trust again? I would say fix that shit if you're trying to resolve conflict in your relationship. Uh -huh, that's so cute. Went on a date, told him about the three month rule. He went on and on about how that won't work for me. Next. <laughs> Next. Yeah, that's exactly it. Goodbye. Goodbye how that won't work for me oh the scare tactic <laughs> that's sexy that's so attractive when you try to use a scare tactic and you think you speak for everybody with a penis oh that is so attractive goodbye goodbye i'm new hello my newbies hello my new people um so i do q and a's every day i i always put on a cute outfit do my makeup do my hair come to q and a's uh we never know what's gonna happen on my lives sometimes i get a little bit salty sometimes i get a little bit saucy uh sometimes i go off on certain topics uh bring pen and paper because you will likely learn something um and so if you want, you can set yourself up for a notification when I go live. So here, here, who here wants a notification when I go live? The amount of guys I've crossed out just by knowing what I want. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I am 48. Uh, what are your thoughts on short-term relationships? Here's the thing. If you just want fun, go have fun. Um, make sure you're playing with the people who just want fun. Don't play with the people who want relationships because you're going to hurt their feelings. So always stay in your lane. If you're in selfish short-term thinking mode, which there's nothing wrong with that, but if you're in selfish short-term thinking mode, stay in your lane. Play with the selfish short-term thinkers. If you're in generous long-term thinking mode, stay in your lane. Make sure you're playing with the generous long-term thinkers. Me, okay. Those of you who want a notification when I go live, my loves, click my little picture up here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up. In the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you do that, say, I just did. Uh, having great chemistry with someone I recently met. Suggestions to ask if married or seeing someone. So first of all, use a no kissing, no sleepovers, no sex for three months dating rule. Because it doesn't matter what he says. You Go ahead and ask a question. But over the course of three months, does he bring you to his place? Does he introduce you to his friends? If not, you are a secret. What is he hiding? So use the no kissing rule because ask the question. Um, ask the question. Does it matter? It doesn't matter. What matters is what happens. What matters is what they show you. So my suggestion, uh, don't ask if they're married because that should be a given that they shouldn't be with you if they're married, right? So if you ask, are you married, it's kind of like saying, I've been hurt so much, now I'm jaded. So don't ask, are you married? You can say, um, are you looking for a long-term relationship, right? And I wouldn't even ask, are you looking for a long-term relationship? The, what you need to do, the, the next time you're face-to-face, -face, and this should happen on the first date, this should happen the first time you guys come face to face is you should say, hey, I just want to let you know I'm done my playtime looking for a committed long term relationship because I really want to get married and have kids and buy a house and go traveling like whatever your goals are with your future partner. I want to do these things. I want to get into a long term relationship. I want to do these things, your fundamental values, those things that absolutely need to align. This needs to come out ASAP. You need to find out ASAP if you're on the same page. Don't be afraid of scaring someone away. The person who is aligned with your fundamental values, who is looking for a long-term relationship, wants to know sooner rather than later that you two have the same goals. So lay out your fundamental values now and lay yours out like, hey, this is me, this is what I want. What about you? So you're not asking, are you what I'm looking for? You're saying, I know what I'm looking for. What are you? 
What are you looking for? What's your goals? What about you? These are my goals. What about you? Your outfit is so pretty. Oh, question in the question tab. You look great, thank you. My partner and I are moving in together in two months. What's your best advice? Have everything on paper before you move in together. So write down all the expenses, all the duties, and put a name beside each one. Figure this out before you move in together so that you don't have this fight. Oh, I thought you were gonna do that. Well, I thought you were gonna do that. Get the agreement on who does what, who's responsible for what before you move in together, make sure it's fair. Any advice for unhealthy relationships with parents? Uh, minimize your exposure. Can you talk more about Kevin Samuel's stuff? I know you posted a video, but get salty. Here's the thing, I, I've watched a total of maybe four or five of his TikToks. I haven't watched anything on YouTube because I, the, I can only handle five minutes of him because he just is such a jerk. He, he is an absolute jerk. Um, so, you know, one thing that I said in my comments is for the misogynist, he's their guy. Uh, that, so all it took was five minutes of watching his TikToks and, and so that's all I'll watch. That's, that's all that's worth watching to me. Um, I don't need to consume a ton of, of videos on a guy who just is really demeaning to women. I did a few days ago. Thank you for letting men know that hearing girls is, oh, hearting girls is not okay in a long-term relationship, right? If it's not okay with you, it's not okay, right? Some people are okay with it, but if it's not okay with you, that's your standard, that's your boundary, you have every right to it. If you don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who does that, don't be in a relationship with somebody who does that. Um, it is communicating, it is attention seeking. Um, you know, some people are like, oh, I'm supporting the person. Here's the thing, these girls have OnlyFans pages, they're looking for customers. You're letting them know, I'm here looking at you. What's the purpose of it? How do I deal with a person who thinks they can get with my boyfriend and gives him that attention? Here's the thing, did you choose a trustworthy person? That's all you need to know. Other people are gonna do whatever they wanna do, right? Like, look at me. Do you think there aren't guys hitting on me? But my husband doesn't ask who I talked to, who sent me a message. He doesn't ask to look at my phone. He doesn't care who tries to talk to me. He knows who I am. He has full confidence in me. So do you have confidence in your partner? Do you have confidence in yourself? Let's address that. Uh, you know, this is not the Jerry Springer show, guys. We need to level up here. If, if your partner goes wandering, it's not the person of the person who was the periphery, right? It's not the periphery person's fault. Don't, don't go on the Jerry Springer show and beat up the girl who slept with your boyfriend. It's your boyfriend that's the problem. And fundamentally, it's your choice of boyfriend that's a problem. So the person you should be beating up is yourself because you chose the cheater. Um, so don't misdirect your attention. I just got to fix that shit in the mail today. So excited. Love that. Hello, my loves. Hello, everybody. Guys, don't forget to go follow me on Instagram. I do a coaching giveaway every month. He replies to everyone but my comments on socials, but introduces me to his friends holding hands. Uh, come get an assessment, my love. That's not enough detail for me to understand if this is a good relationship for you or not. Thoughts on pets in a breakup. Advice on getting the back uh, when the ex can't see past his trauma. So here's the thing about pets is, is you just got to pick a person who's going to keep them and that's it. You got to let them go. Um, no, none of this, um, when you call it, uh, visitation. Don't do that. Don't do that. Right? Because you're getting in your own way. You're keeping ties to somebody you need to let go of. You're going to get in your next relationship. They have to handle you, you know, picking up your dog every other week or every other weekend or something like with the ex clean break, leave the past behind 
it's unfortunate that you got in a relationship that didn't work and you guys got a pet together but if they're not if they paid for the animal and they don't want to let it go then this is not your animal so it comes down to who paid for the animal the person who paid for the animal is the person who takes the animal with them don't do a visitation thing signs of first date went well you enjoyed yourself you felt you felt good but always use a no kissing for three months dating rule if because the first 10 20 dates can go well but if somebody's putting up a facade like if you get two months into like spending time with somebody and you've never been to their place red flag like don't kiss that person if their behavior is inconsistent for two months but then gets consistent you know because you're using no kissing for three months dating role and they're like inconsistent the first two months like consistent for the first you know week three weeks inconsistent and then picking up on the consistency again so like woohoo finish line get into that kiss right no you are not consistent for three months i need three months of consistent plugged in behavior because the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. If you were consistent for a few weeks and then inconsistent for a number of weeks and then consistent again, all I know is that you are inconsistent. And I'm gonna get in a relationship with somebody who can be plugged in and then they unplug and then they plug in and then they unplug. I want somebody who's plugged in. I wanna get in a relationship with somebody who shows me consistent behavior over the course of three months because that's what I can anticipate going into the relationship. How do I get rid of a narcissist and leave my trauma bond? Come and get coaching, my love. I don't have a, a magic wand for that. This is a deep dive into you and what put you here in the first place. Love the posters. These are my book covers. Uh, so for those of you who are new, I wrote eight, I wrote nine books. Oh my God. I got, I got to remember that now. Damn. I wrote nine books. I wrote nine books. Uh, I got a new one. It just released today. It's a book for men. Where are my men at? My men say, here I am. Men say, here I am. How important is physical attraction? He's amazing, but not my type. Give it time. If he's amazing, but not your type, give it time. Um, my husband was not my type for a long time and then I saw how confident he was and that just on top of everything I knew about him blew my mind and all of a sudden he was like sexy. So maybe he's not your type but he's open to suggestions. You ever thought about cutting your hair this way? You ever thought about wearing clothes like this? You ever thought about using teeth whiteners? You ever thought about shaving? You ever thought about wearing this brand of cologne? If there's things that you like on a man, make these suggestions if you know my husband picked up all the suggestions I made, the ones I just mentioned and put it all together. And then I saw the confidence and I was like, Ooh, damn, who's, who's this motherfucker? So give it time. Where are my men at? Hello. How do you get an assessment? You come get a coaching session. So go into the link tree in my bio, hit that coaching button, it's the second one. It takes you to a page, follow the instructions on the page and you can book yourself in for a session and I can do a deep dive into your situation and, and help you understand what you should be doing. Uh, tarot card readings, I have nothing against them. You got your kitty back, good. Um, so for the men, for the men, I have a book for you. I have a book for you, my men. I have a book. Do you want to see the cover? It just came out on Amazon today. You look great. Thank you. It just came out on Amazon today. Let me show you the cover. This is the dating book for men. So for men, this is the book that's going to help you land someone like me. Someone like my ladies love the dress. White House Black Market, Le Chateau. So here it is right here. There is a link to it in the link tree in my bio. If you want this book, click that button in the link tree in my bio, that first one. It's gonna take you to Amazon. You can go grab it off Amazon. What if those suggestions offend him? Then he is a weak, weak ass guy. He is not a man. He is a weak ass guy. 
with a massive ego and that's a huge red flag massive massive red flag massive red flag Great cover, thank you. Yeah, honestly, uh, like if 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 saying you know, uh, I think you'd look nice in a shirt like this that offends him. Uh, you'd look ten years younger if you shaved your goatee that offends him. Um, have you ever thought about using teeth whiteners that offends him? Mm -hmm. You're you're offended at that. Here, I, was, I am not getting in a relationship with somebody who's offended at that because that is so low level to get offended at that we are just going to fight all the time because you're going to see something to be offended about around every single corner. Uh, how do I deal with trust issues from past relationships while in a new one? Come and take my No More Insecurity program. This is exactly what that is for. It's to alleviate anxiety, fear, overthinking, jealousy, insecurity. I thought we shouldn't try to change anyone. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not telling you what to do. You're free to do what you want. Um, you are always free to do what you want. I'm not telling you what to do. You are free to do what you want. You, I think you look good in a shirt like this. I'm not changing them. You look 10 years younger if you shaved your goatee. I'm not changing them. Have you ever thought about wearing this cologne? Have you ever thought about whining your teeth? I'm not changing him. I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who likes DMs and comments on other girls' pictures. I'm not changing him. He's free to do what he wants. I am free to walk away at all times. I'm not getting into a relationship to change somebody. But if I'm hanging around with somebody and he's wondering how he's going to get with me. And I happen to say, I think you'd look 10 years younger if you shaved your goatee. And he doesn't say to himself, maybe she'll find me more attractive if I shave my goatee. And doesn't bother to shave his goatee. That's you. That's on you. If I don't come to find you attractive because you don't care to listen to what I like and apply it, that's okay. I'm not telling you to change. But listen, my husband shaved the goatee, used the teeth whitener, got a new wardrobe, wore the cologne, and I cannot, 15 years later, take my hands off this man. The last time we made out was today at supper time. So do you want that? Does exterior skin matter to you so much? Or are you willing to modify some things because this what i wear this is all a shell this is like my hair is an outfit the way i do my makeup is an outfit it's not what i am it's something i put on and take off so it doesn't define me as a human being and that's how confident my husband is he changed those things about himself not because it was changing who he was as a human being but because it didn't matter it didn't change him to shave his goatee. It didn't change him to buy newer clothes that fit him. <clears throat> Can I buy the book for my boyfriend of one year? Uh, the Perfect Play book, is that the one you're talking about? So this is teaching men how to get in a relationship with a woman. Um, just like No More Assholes is teaching women how to get into relationships with men. I don't do bedroom stuff on lives. I do that on one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. Do, 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 do. Asked him to wear something nicer than a t-shirt and jeans when he met my family and he got upset. <laughs> wow, goodbye, goodbye. He got upset. That's, oh no, 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 no. He gets to go, my love, he gets to go. Like, if I had said that, like, seriously, my husband lets me pick his clothes for him because it doesn't, it, it, he, he's so confident in himself, right? He's so confident in himself. Uh, he gets upset at that. Like, he's so thin-skinned. Um, no, 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 no. And he should know. He should want to show up properly to meet your parents. That is 
is messed up. Honestly, I, for me, this this guy, this is not a man for one thing, because men get it, guys don't. So this is not a man, this is a guy. I don't suggest you be with a guy because you get this. You get somebody being upset because you said, hey, we're gonna go meet my parents. Can you wear something nicer than what you wear to go hang at the boys in the garage, right? He got upset at that. When people ask me, I'm gonna go meet our parents, what should I wear? I say, job interview. What would you wear to a job interview? Dress like that. And he gets upset at that. He's he's gonna, there's, everything is gonna be a fight with this person. I just, I wouldn't. Like, it's so disrespectful too, right? Like, he's gonna go meet your parents and, and he doesn't, he doesn't care to make a good first impression because he just doesn't give a shit. And it sounds like he doesn't care about anybody but himself. I'd be low-key offended if a guy ever asked if I thought about whitening my teeth. I've had a guy point out that I had nice long hair coming off my chin. Uh, I'm not offended. I'm not offended by that. I'm like, ooh, you know what? Never thought about that. I wasn't offended the first time somebody wanted to pluck my eyebrows. They were wild, guys. Wild. I have a picture of my face with my with my wild eyebrows, my natural eyebrows. This is actually going to be the cover of my... um of my memoir of yeah because I was, I was so natural back then um i wasn't offended the first time somebody said oh my god i need to pluck your eyebrows well okay never thought about that right this this is your exterior your exterior is not who you are if i was disfigured i would still be doing what i'm doing because my brain is still there my character is still there my integrity is still there so glad I found you. And that's what confident people are. Confident people are like, oh, what? I can tweak my exterior. Okay, sure. Right? Like it doesn't diminish you to tweak your exterior. It does not diminish you to tweak your exterior. I've had my girlfriends. Oh my God, my girlfriends, they changed me. Like the first time I went out with my friend Taylor, the very first time I went out that night, she took a rhinestone bracelet off her wrist, put it on my wrist because I was like, I was, you know, dull tank top, jeans, black fanny pack, brown leather flat shoes. And she put this rhinestone on my bracelet. We went to government in Toronto. We went to a club where it's like house music, right? EDM. That's my jam. That's why I wear the flat shoes. I'm dancing all night long. She puts this rhinestone bracelet on my wrist. She said, you need to wear this because you need to sparkle as much on the outside as you do on the inside. I would go to my girlfriend's house and we would be getting ready to go out. She goes, you're not wearing that. She'd grab a dress out of her closet and go try this on and spruce me up. It's okay. It was, I'm, I'm so confident in who I am. You wanna change my stare? Go for it, go for it. You're not changing me. What if your boyfriend tells you to lose weight? How much does he weigh? Lose that. Um, so my, I, I monitor my husband's weight because I am conscious of his health. I wanna keep around for a long time. I know extra weight around the middle tends to lead to heart disease, other diseases. I want my husband to stay forever. So I monitor my husband's waistline, literally I do. And when I notice he gets a little bit, you know, poochy in the waistline, I, I, I modify what I feed him. Um, I also tell him he's not allowed to eat outside foods uh, because people would bring him pastries and he would eat that. And I'm like, nah, -uh, baby, just the sugar. Nope. Not good for you. You're not going to eat that. So I do monitor my husband's weight. I monitor his health. He's very happy to have me monitor that for him. He has been much healthier since I've come into his life. Men typically do live longer, uh, when they are married. No wonder. Um, so take it take it the way you want my husband doesn't get offended when i say baby i'm gonna start feeding you less or 
he wants more nighttime snack and I go, nope, that's enough. He go, okay. How do you handle things if your partner has different political views? You don't talk politics, which is what we do in this house. How do you tell your husband to lose weight? I the, I said to him, because um, he, he has this light beer that he loves. And uh, I said, baby, either you're gonna drink less beer or I'm gonna start feeding you less food. So I said that. savage um you t uh, i'm telling him what to do what when i what and then my husband is bad but it makes him so happy he has such a beautiful face i love this michelle you're cute I do, I buy all my husband's clothes too. I don't want to have to buy him new pants. <laughs> so I keep them, I keep them the same size. It's not okay to reach out to an ex. Don't reach out to an ex. I do that to my friends too and we have the best time. You know, this is, like it's all about elevation, right? It's, it's all about elevation and I love that. I have amazing friends, yeah, I really do. <laughs> what about what he likes? It doesn't matter, why not find a person that likes you for you? My husband is not attached to his exterior right he, like like him changing clothes he, he didn't have a style right like he had no style there was no like i'm attached to the style don't try and change my style he had no style and so i said you know you like you need a new wardrobe because like his style was was clothes from the 80s that didn't fit him because he didn't know how to even buy clothes um so what he likes if he liked his goatee he wouldn't have he wouldn't have shaved it you know he had a goatee because his ex-wife liked goatees so the only reason he had a goatee was because his ex liked goatees i said you look 10 years younger if you shaved your goatee i didn't say shave your goatee he shaved his goatee i went whoa look at you um so here's the thing you're not hearing me when i say that changing your exterior doesn't change who you are inside right when you say why not find a person who likes you for you you don't get it that when you are confident with who you are changing your outside however your outside looks doesn't change your confidence level i'm not more confident because my hair is lighter now i'm not more confident because it's shorter i'm not more confident because you know my makeup looks like this today i'm equally confident when i don't have makeup and i have bed head Me and my boyfriend have different timelines for marriage, but love each other too much to leave. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Oh, my name is Miriam and my boyfriend's name is Landon. We love you so much. Hello, my loves. I love this. Love, love, love. Why do you guys leave when the situation feels hard to them in a long-term relationship? Mine didn't. I don't know why yours did. It's all situational, my love. My boyfriend is on vacation. How do I stay busy when I'm home alone for days at a time? Grab custom made. Find out what your purpose and your passion is. He's free to eat and drink what he wants. He's, listen, the man is a, he's, he's a man. He's an adult, he's grown up, he's free to eat and drink what he wants. He lets me monitor it because he doesn't mind giving me the responsibility of maintaining his physical health. Greatest of all times, thank you. My top is Le Chateau. This is a dress, it's such a cute dress too. 
I need to do a fashion show for you guys at some point. I need to make a fashion, like a, like a fashion show TikTok for you. What if you use your exterior to express yourself? Then that's you and you define yourself through your exterior and that's totally fine. My husband does not, which is why he was okay with the suggestions that I made and he took all the suggestions. Um, so if you define yourself with your exterior, then so be it. Then you say, no, I'm not changing how I look. I'm attached to how I look. This is, this is part of my identity and how I express myself, totally fine. My husband doesn't do that. My husband is, is, he's not focused on his exterior and identifying with his exterior and using that as an identifier of who he is on the inside. No, you cannot. Um, guys, who wants a notification when I go live? How do you not think about bringing up politics? I do think about it, but I keep my... Until the moment passes. So I don't. And he probably does the same thing. He he thinks about saying something, but then he doesn't because he knows we're just going to get in a kerfuffle about it. Because we will. Because we are absolute opposite ends of the spectrum. When it comes to politics, we have very different beliefs. We believe very different things um and so we just there is no meeting in the middle with us so we simply don't have the conversation pregnant he has no interest in getting married i don't know how to move forward my love this is the situation you're in you're gonna make a baby you need to be a family you had a fundamental value of wanting to get married but you got in a relationship who didn't share your fundamental value that's on you that's on you and now you're going to make a baby so now you need to release the desire for that fundamental value in order to have more peace and love and cohesiveness in your relationship so that the two of you stay together and parent your baby together so you need to toss out your fundamental value if you're going to stay and fight about this you're going to break up a family and now the child that you make has to go between mom and dad and that's not fair to the baby so come get a coaching session if you need help with this, if you need help dealing with this, if you need to find some peace of mind, if you need to find some greater happiness, if you need to figure out how to become closer and more intimate with your partner so that the two of you are parents together, raising your child together. But you need to take responsibility for your decisions and you decided to go into a relationship and stay in a relationship with somebody who did not want to get married and if you didn't have that conversation until you got pregnant that's on you too you should have had that conversation before kissing him so take responsibility for your decisions take responsibility for what you didn't do which is your due diligence and put that aside and raise your baby together Uh, I'm dating an avoidant lover who completely shuts down when life happens, then don't. When life happens, be with a man who who can face life, you know what I mean? Uh, right? Don't don't stay with that. Don't stay with that. I, I got in a relationship with somebody who takes on life. I <laughs> mean, seriously, I got with somebody amazing. I really did. I got with I got with somebody who takes on responsibilities, right? Get with a man. Men are capable, confident, capable, responsible, hardworking. Get with a man. Don't get with a guy. Uh, do you think I'm dating? We should wait three months to kiss. Yes. If you're looking for a committed long-term relationship with somebody who needs to met a long set of criteria to be your future husband and future father of your child and future major purchase decision maker with you, then use a no kissing for three months dating rule to know somebody before you kiss and get into a relationship and go, oh, you're missing some of those qualities that I want. Mm, now what do I do? Oh no, like I love him, it's so hard to leave. Don't do that to yourself. Like spend three months getting to know them. If three months is too long, well, you get what you get. You get what you get. You didn't do your homework and you got what you got. 
So you don't have a right to complain because you didn't do the work necessary to know what you were getting into before you got into it. If you need help with this, do get no more assholes. I talk about the science behind the no kissing for three months dating rule, the script, how you're going to introduce it. Would you be okay with a hubby going to dinner or drinks with an old friend? He went to coffee with an old friend. Um, so does your hubby have social media? No, he doesn't. He, he does not have social media, nothing, no Facebook, no Instagram, no Twitter, no TikTok, no nothing, nothing at all. He looks amazing, thank you. We talked about our future even before we kissed, but when it came time to get married, he got scared. So, should have got married before you had the baby, right? So drop it, my love. Drop it. Because you're going to make a baby now. Don't don't fight about that. There's no point fighting about that. Focus on being a cohesive couple together. I do tell you how I really feel. Can you date your friend's sibling with your friend's... Um, if you want to keep your friend, then you want to have your friend's blessing, right? <laughs> you deserve that, man. I love how you publicly praise him. You're such a wonderful and strong woman. Thank you. I do deserve him. He's amazing. He's so good. He's so, so good. Do you see the kisses? I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky he let me he let me put our kisses on a TikTok. Like, did you see the kiss? Did you see the kisses? Who saw the kiss? Guys blame the world for their problems. Men will pick themselves back up and move forward. Yes. Very good distinction. Uh who saw who saw the kisses? Who saw the kisses with my husband? Oh, he's so good at kissing me too. Should you wait three months to kiss? Of course you should. You should also get no more assholes um, because you need to understand how to date in a way that helps you uncover who someone is before you get in a relationship with them. That way you stop making mistakes when it comes to choosing partners. I saw the kisses, so clear you're madly in love. Yes, he's so good to me. I did, yes. Oh, I love my mans. My boyfriend doesn't like to be around me when he has a bad day. Uh, so give him space. That's okay. It's okay for people to take space when they're not in a good mood. Absolutely okay for people to take space when they're not in a good mood. Guys, I want to tell you, I have a new book. I have a new book, book number nine. This one's for the men. The men have been asking me forever for a book, so I wrote a dating book for men. So now, so No More Assholes is where I teach women how to get into a relationship with a man. The perfect play is how I teach men how to get into a relationship with a woman. It is just up on Amazon today. Today's the first day. So if you guys click the link tree in my bio, that first button in the link tree in my bio, you can go get that book. Uh, send it to your male friends. So click on the link, go to Amazon, click that link, like get the link, go send it to your male friends. Um, I'm an easy sell, you're so cute. Uh, yeah, so I'm curious to see what the men are gonna say about this book. I'm really curious. I'm really curious to find out what the men are gonna, what they're gonna say about this book. I saw them after a breakup, how do men process things? Uh, initially they kind of go through like a relief period because leading up to a breakup there's been a lot of fighting um, and so they tend to initially be kind of relieved um, but then they go into a sadness phase right because they're like oh you know what maybe she wasn't so bad because time does that um, uh, oh I kind of miss her oh I'm feeling lonely oh it's gonna be hard to find somebody else maybe so, uh, yeah, so usually it's like, yay, and then, oh, whereas we go, oh, and then, yay. Uh-uh. I did just block somebody. I, I saw, I saw somebody got in trouble. 
Should you tell your friend if her boyfriend has major red flags? Yes, yes, absolutely. Hello from Paris. Oh, there's another one. You're so welcome. Dating in college university advice. If you're in a relationship, get fix that shit. If you're single, get no more assholes. Fix that shit is going to teach you how to have a healthy relationship so you can stay together. No more assholes is going to teach you how to date in such a way that you don't get taken advantage of. Which book do I recommend for codependency? Uh, so two, fix that shit and custom made. So yeah, so these two right here are the perfect combination for codependency because fix that shit is going to teach you how to relationship, how to be healthy, how to practice self love, how to be independent while also be plugged into your relationship how to help yourself navigate through emotions, not vomit into your relationship, resolve conflict. This one is going to teach you how to balance your life. So not make your partner your purpose, but really balance um, you know, your partner and your purpose. If you don't know what your purpose is, that's what this one teaches you. What is your purpose? Every single chapter ends with exercises i introduce a concept and i get you delving into that concept so that you really figure yourself out and then i also teach you how to monetize your passion once you figure it out so that you literally start getting paid what you, um, get paid doing something that you love how do you get over a long-term relationship grad come back queen this is a book that's going to help your heart heal Do you guys regret hurting the girl who always to buy him? It's it's a per person thing, right? Um, maybe they do, maybe they don't. It depends. You're so welcome. About guys hanging around committed women, would uh, that be the same with men having female friends? It depends, right? Um, so I have male friends who are not being periphery males. They're not waiting for a mating opportunity. They are simply men who can have platonic relationships with women. I have had periphery males. Uh, so, you know, it, it all depends on the individual. Women can be periphery, by the way. So, uh, yeah, and just so you know. Everything goes both ways. Everything goes both ways. We get weird people dropping in every now and then every now and then custom made or your new book first my new book first my new book first and then come tell me what you think are you spreading positivity most of the time guys do i spread positivity i just bought a book from you you did which one did you get Getting over a long-term relationship is very hard, but possible. Don't give up hope. It takes time. Yes. Uh, boyfriend said I was so understanding and easy to be with. Thanks to you and fix that shit. Yes, my love. Yes, yes, yes. So since you're being so understanding and easy to be with, how has his behavior towards you changed? What are you noticing in his behaviors? Your books are so good everyone needs them thank you periphery is um people who orbit around you waiting for their chance yes always what's your new book it's a dating book for men i breeze through dating one i breeze through dating 101 i don't know where to go next uh if you're single get into no more assholes if you're in a relationship get into fix that shit 
Uh, say yes to goodness fits well with anything. If you don't know what your purpose is, you can also dive into custom made. Oh, you're amazing. I love you lots. Thank you. So the new book, um, yes. Oh, you guys are so sweet. So the new book is teaching men how to get into relationship with women. So how to navigate dating, what to look for, how to date, who they should be, how they should be. Oh, you guys are so good. I love the resounding yeses. Truth is positive. I love you. Hey, I love you so much. I love you back. Yay, I'm excited too, my love. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Love it. I love letting you guys speak for me because I think it's so much more powerful than than me saying some things. It's kind of like the, um, uh, the secondhand compliment, right? Uh, you know, my husband can, can say, you're beautiful, you're amazing. But if somebody came to me and said, I was talking to your husband and he was saying how beautiful and amazing you are, I'd be like, oh, right? Like even just saying that, it makes me like, oh, would you say it's wise to cut out the people who are just waiting for their chance with you? I would. Yeah, I would, I would, I would. Um, because there's, they're, they're, they're trying to have a negative influence on you. So always cut out the people who are trying to have a negative impact on your life. Like, um, I'm married. If there's a periphery male, he's trying to break up my marriage, right? He's, he's, he doesn't, he doesn't want me for a relationship, which is why he's a periphery male, or maybe he does, right? But at the very least, he's going to cause chaos and conflict if I turn to him. So, I'm going to cut him out because the only reason he's around is to cause chaos and conflict. If the guy is kind of antisocial, is that a red flag? If you are a social person, it is not a good fit, right? If you are antisocial, it's not a red flag, it's a good fit. If you are introverted um, but wanted to be more extroverted, it's not a good fit. So I'm not going to say antisocial is a red flag. But for you, it might not be a good fit. What is say as to goodness about? So this book is about um, 10 areas of your life that affect you and how you can navigate them to be happier. There it is. Uh, tips on his co-workers that are relentless to get a chance from him. I love your book and TikToks. Yay. So here's the thing. Don't focus on them at all. The number one sexiest trait is confidence. Get fixed that shit, remove the conflict from your relationship so there's no susceptibility. Be the most amazing person in his life. Be confident in yourself. Be happy so that you infect happiness into the relationship and don't ask anything about his coworkers because that's like you saying, I don't see you. If he has integrity, if he is trustworthy, don't continuously question his character and integrity because every single time you do that, you take him down. You want to elevate him. You want to be the most amazing woman in the world. That means somebody who's supportive, elevating, confident, in control of herself. Is it okay to be friends with an ex if there are still feelings there? Not, not if you're trying to get into a relationship. Nope. Nope. I was friends with my ex-husband after we divorced because there was, it was platonic. It was, it was done. It was platonic. Um, I would not have been able to do that if either of us still had feelings. Tips on elevating your boyfriend as much as you can. Everything that he does for you no matter how big or how small, like like he buys you a lavish gift. Thank you, baby, I appreciate that. You're so good to me. He opens the car door. Thank you, baby, you're such a good man, right? Whatever he does, thank you, baby. Thank you, baby, I appreciate you. Thank you, baby, you're such a good man. Thank you, baby, you take such good care of me. Thank you, baby, you're so good to me, right? Thank you, baby. Gratitude for everything he does. That is very elevating to a man. Uh, she really thinks he didn't still have feelings? Are you talking about me? 
He, like, are you trying to talk about my reality as though you have a clue? Uh, would you recommend someone keep going and coming back? It depends on the situation. If you want clarity, come get a coaching session. Uh, how can you tell if he's a periphery male? Is it super obvious? It is. Yes, it is. Uh, they didn't like you. They didn't like you because you think you know more than you actually do. Uh, the chapter on why men cheat is the icing on the cake. Love that chapter today. Ah, oh, thank you. Beautiful dress. Thank you. I like it a lot. Oh, yeah, that's why. Okay, I was wondering why you guys muted him, but now I see. I blocked him. I don't have kids. My husband has two. I love you. Thank you for all you do. You're so welcome, my love. So, so welcome. You are so welcome. Guys, does anybody want a book walkthrough? Anybody want me to do like a quick walkthrough of my books? Uh, there will be resentment if he gives that much up. I don't, that, that looks like a puzzle piece. Uh, no kids with my hubby. No kids with my hubby. Yes, please. What is this? I'm new. Okay, Jay, you can go for a walk. It's okay. Um, so, yes, please. Yes, you look great. Love your positivity and clarity. Thank you. Yes, please. Just bought fix that shit. Love it. Okay. Comeback Queen is a book that helps you get over a breakup and put your heart back together and heal after a breakup. No More Assholes helps you choose the right partner the next time around so you don't go through breakup and heartbreak again. After the First Kiss helps you get into your new relationship with less insecurity so that you transition into the reality phase and solidify your relationship. Fix That Shit is going to keep you from fighting in your relationship or if you are already fighting, it's gonna get rid of the fighting. This only works if you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you. No More Assholes helps you get with a generous long-term thinker who loves you. Uh, custom Make goes really well to fix that shit if you are codependent, if you don't know what your purpose is and you're making your partner your purpose, which is causing fights in your relationship because you are not independent. This is going to teach you how to be independent by getting you to tap into your purpose and your passion and your talent and monetizing it literally getting paid doing what you love you guys um that's a win-win right there so dating 101 this is a textbook there's no snaring no snare no swearing mamas and papas in dating 101 um this is understanding the drives behaviors and emotions behind love this needs to be in every high school in sex ed class uh fake love need not apply how to avoid posers losers scammers or predators this is a free book if you hit the free button in the link tree uh, the free book button in the link tree in my bio say yes to goodness um this one is about life this is this is short and sweet but oh so full of really good stuff all my books guys i can play book roulette like you tell me to play book roulette in a book i will open it up at random and read one paragraph and i'll blow your mind um so say yes to goodness so small but so packed i have people who buy a copy and then buy a second copy because they lent out my copy and then get it back and they, this is like their little Bible. Um, so Say Yes to Goodness goes really great with any book. Yes. What, please, yes. Playbook Roulette. Which book? Which book? I'm a man fan. Your advice is valid. Man fan, are you going to go get, are you a single man fan or in a relationship? Are you going to go get the book, The Perfect Play for my single men? Uh, where are my single men at? Single men say, here I am. Custom made. Yes, single man. Did you, are you, did you see? Did I show you the cover? Uh, on custom made, we got custom made. Okay. Did I, did I show you the cover? Is it on Audible? 
Uh, no, it's not. Not yet. Not yet. Um, paperback and Kindle. Custom made. Uh, why no poster for after the first kiss? Because I only have room for five. So, um, I have like my five best sellers. So, you're absolutely brilliant. I think you're taking the time to help us with our lives. Yes, it makes me really happy. So this is, this is the book for my single men. This is teaching, this, that's going to teach you how to get into a relationship with a woman. Um, the link to that is in the link tree in my bio. You look so pretty. Thank you. How long before you should put this into, put titles into the relationship? Three months. No kissing, no sleepovers for three months. Seal the deal at the three month mark with somebody who's impressed you consistently for three months. You need a better space for all your book posters. Yes. Screenshot it. We'll check it out. Awesome. Good, good, good. Don't forget to use the link in the link tree in my bio to go grab it because um, if you search it, it might not come up yet because it just came up on Amazon today. So the search algorithm isn't all arranged yet. Uh, so book roulette on custom made. Here we go. So, uh, let me see. But I wasn't going to let that direct my course of action. So instead of turning my car around, I checked to see if I was still plugged in. I soothed myself back to calmness, took a walk to move myself forward, and ensured I was filling my mind with the words I needed instead of letting myself become overwhelmed with the emotions I was experiencing. And like the hero I'd become, I threw my cape back on and took off once again. Just bought custom made too. Tired of being codependent. Love it. Are you the author of those books? All those books? Yes. I wrote I wrote nine. I'm missing one now because I just released one today. So I gotta I gotta keep remembering I wrote nine books now. Uh, how long does it take to see results from meditation? Some people it's a day, some people it's a week, but be consistent, keep plugging into it. If there aren't titles at that point, is it a red flag? Absolutely. Love it. Congratulations. Thank you. I will buy your books. Every little bit of help is greatly appreciated. Yay. Love it. Love, 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 love. I love coming on later at night. <gasps> Crystal. Come back. If I have no clue what my purpose is, can custom made still help? That's what it's for. That is exactly what that book is for, is to help you understand what your purpose is. Um, get ready to work. It is a workbook. So get ready to be doing a lot of thinking and, and journaling, like writing, um, because every single chapter ends with you writing, because I'm going to talk about something and then I'm going to ask you some questions to get you really thinking about that subject because you need to go tap into a part of yourself that you haven't touched in for a long time. What is your take on keeping in touch with an ex? If you are platonic, it's okay. Um, you know, it depends the reason why, right? I love the, I love that. Nice dress, thank you. Any suggestions for those of us who are not very good at communicating verbally? um write down what you want to say first right like 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 write it all down and formulate it rewrite it if you want to and then you can you can say to your partner hey i have this can i read this to you and then read what you wrote down but you can take the time to write down your script um i do this with people i help them with their script when they're going to have difficult conversations so you can take the time to write down your script and then go to your partner and say, can I read this to you? I am married. Been with my man for 15 years. Fifteen years. Uh, guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. How do I apply what is in your books? Do reminders help? Yes. 
I like to do a meditation chart where you write down your minutes. If you go to my meditation resource button in the link to my bio, um, you can, you'll see that there's a chart, a meditation chart that you can print out. I do not have a twin sister in Idaho. I'm about to break up with my boyfriend who lives three hours away. Should I drive to him or just FaceTime? Ask yourself this. If he was breaking up with you, how would he do it? Would he drive over? Would he FaceTime? How would he do it? Do it the way he would do it. Will in-laws ever like someone they don't like? Struggling girlfriend here. Um, it depends on them. It depends on who you are. Uh, like it, it, it depends why they don't like you, right? Like sometimes, um, you know, it's, it's a, you know, they just won't like anybody uh, or they won't like anybody who isn't his ex that they thought he was going to marry and they were already envisioning the babies they're going to make together or they don't like you because you're not the same religion or the same skin color, uh, right? So it, it depends on the reasons. It depends on who you are. Maybe they don't like you because they don't think you're hardworking enough or responsible enough or polite enough. I don't know. I use your relationship as a role model. This is what I show you. This is why I'm so transparent because I want you guys to um, to use me as a role model 100%. This is why I'm here. This is why I'm created the way I'm created. This is why I've gone through what I've gone through. This is why I have what I have. My entire existence is for you to learn from and create something better for yourself. We are starting a revolution, you guys. Make no mistake, we are starting a revolution. Who's here for the revolution? I do, those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture here once or twice, you're gonna get a pop-up, and the pop-up is a bell. Dang, you're so welcome. How to deal with a narcissistic co-parent? Get fix that shit. Use the ninja mind tricks in this book to get peace and cooperation. Who is here for the revolution? You're absolutely a role model. Thank you. Oh, you're helping me so much. Thank you. Fifteen years. Don't you get bored? Have you seen my man? Have you seen my man? Have you seen this man? Oh man, do you know Do you know what I said to him today? Uh, yes, me, I'm here. Did you always know what you wanted to do in life? No, um, I knew when I was six that I wanted to be a stripper. So that part I very much knew early on. Um, but I didn't know I was gonna be a writer until five years before I wrote my first book and it took me five years to know what my first book was gonna be. Your information is priceless. I love it. Thank you. I'm at chapter 34. Love it. Love, love, love. Uh, so 15 years. Do you ever get bored of seeing the same face? So this is what I said to my husband um, after I, I went into the shop and I saw him from afar. And, and just seeing him from afar, I got that little, ooh, you know? You know that one? Ooh. I got that little, ooh. And so he sees me and he comes up to me. I go, baby and he goes yeah i go how do you do it and he knows exactly what i'm talking about when i say something like that he knows he gave me a zing and he just he just he gives me a zing just by being him i just i see how he walks i see how he moves i see how he handles something i see how his mouth moves it's just everything about him when i, I made a TikTok today about how i'm not worried if my husband were to talk to another girl and in fact he wouldn't because he's infatuated with me Honestly, I think that's my word towards him. I it, like I am just so over the moon over him and he's such like a calm steady person. He wouldn't use the word infatuation. Um, you know, he he would just say he loves me. But yeah. Uh did you always know he was the one? No. I I it, it kind of it happened in stages. Like it really did happen in stages. There was the moment where um I knew I didn't want to lose him. That was in 2006, and then we started a relationship, and then there was um, the moment where I knew that our energy, like, was, it, it fit extremely well, um, and that was after the first time that we fought, 
and um, he he left angry and then he came back to my house I don't know how long after but I you know I opened the door and there he was and without a word we just hugged and it was it, the fit just the fit the fit oh like it just I felt our energy fit I felt our bodies fit I'd never been so aware how well we fit together until that moment and then the voice in my head started saying it could be so good if only you could clear the static um so and then we stopped fighting you guys i started meditating we stopped fighting and and i just really realized how good we are so because i cleared the static and the voice was right it said it could be so good if only you could clear the static. Do you know what I did today? I he he had to go change an oxygen tank. He goes he does hyperbaric therapy every Tuesday. He goes oh what Tuesday Wednesday he goes and changes the hyperbaric uh, the, the oxygen tank. And it was supper time. I go uh, I go let's get some A and W for supper. And then like I didn't have a coaching session. I said I'll go with you. Like I just went to go for a ride with him in the car. Like. I, just to go for a ride in town i just just to be around him for that extra little bit of time just because i could i just took a ride love that i feel that way with my boyfriend when we hug it feels like we've been together for lifetimes right thank you for your story you're so welcome okay bye do you believe in love at first sight i i believe everything is possible so <coughs> my husband it was not love at first sight it was a slow burn so that's possible too you can develop a slow burn with somebody and have something so passionate and so close and so intimate and so amazing. Is it bad if I don't feel that thing? If you are in a relationship, uh, get your two kisses in every day. Two kisses, minimum five seconds each. In a relationship, almost two and a half years, but he's not telling about me to his family. What should I do? Dump him. You're a secret dump him you're not in a relationship like you are not in a relationship right you're not because if you were he would profess he would let people know that you exist he doesn't so you are in a relationship with somebody who's not in a relationship with you How do I know if my relationship was emotionally abusive or just toxic? Um, come get a session. I don't know without unpacking. Greetings from Germany. Uh, so my loves, so my loves, my loves. My boyfriend talks about me to everyone he meets and makes me feel so special, yes. Uh, do any of your books touch on long distance? I have a long distance guide for you actually it's free so where are all my long distance people all my long distance people say here i am here i am all my distance all my long distance relationshipers say here i am after a month of not fighting my so and i fought today and i feel so discouraged so here's the thing now you know what it's like to have a month so do that again get a month in again um take responsibility say your three-part apology right own your own your mistakes whatever they were own them this i'm sorry for i realized this is how it affected you this is my plan for not doing this again and get back on track <clears throat> me here i am uh your lives are very comforting good 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 all my loves who were in a long distance relationship go into my bio me due to military go into my bio click on that link tree scroll down you're going to see there's a free long distance relationship guide go ahead and download that it's going to teach you how to have more closeness more intimacy and also resolve conflict in your relationship was this always your career or were you doing something else before i was a stripper i was a stripper before how do you know someone is one? Sometimes you just find it out in layers. It doesn't hit you all at once. You realize it over time. But someone who's abusive is never the one. 
I'm, I'm really proud of you for getting a month of no fighting, by the way. Good for you. Thank you for your service. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Good for you. I'm very proud of you for doing that. That's amazing. That's amazing. Give yourself full credit. Full credit. Full credit. You deserve a bazillion cookies because you got to a month without fighting. That's incredible. Can you define abuse when people try to take you down? If they try to hurt you mentally, emotionally, physically? No. No. Uh, where can we find the resource for long distance relationships? Go to my bio, click on the link tree. You're gonna find it if you scroll down. Do you and your husband ever fight? Not anymore. Not anymore. We haven't had a fight in five years. Five years. Two keys to getting that. You have to be with a generous long-term thinker who loves you, so get no more assholes if you need help getting into a relationship with that person. And you have to do what's and fix that shit. You gotta, you gotta have the right partner and then you gotta do the right thing. So getting the right partner is no more assholes. Doing the right thing is fix that shit. How do you get over awkward disagreements with your partner? You take responsibility for your part of the equation. You come forward with your apology, your three-part apology. I'm sorry for, I realize that this is my plan for not doing this again. Is serial cheating considered abuse? 100% because they're putting your physical health at risk. I needed to hear that. Yay. A bar is a good place to meet a good guy. Listen, I met mine in a strip club. I met mine in a strip club. My good man. Hair care routine. Um, I use the line of shampoo, uh, the Shea Butter line. I use the Shea Butter line of shampoo. I don't put any, I just put a, like a little spritz of like a, like a liquid spray, um, leave-on hair, hair conditioner, leave-on conditioner after, um, and that's it, and style my hair, and, and then, uh, when it, like, in the morning, like, I comb my hair, I put a little bit of leave-on conditioner, the spritz, and, and I just play it, and that's it. You guys don't bicker at all. No. Like, we don't. Like, because the moment it starts to escalate, I'm like, not worth it. So, I just let it go. There's, there's nothing worth fighting over. Our fundamental values are aligned. Our life goals are aligned. Both of us are happy with who we are and what we do. We bring that happiness to the relationship. Both of us share a love of physical affection. Uh, we are happy. We are very happy together. Everything is aligned with us. Uh, all the old conflicts have been resolved. So there's no residual resentment or any kind of negative feelings about that. Anything that happens to pop up, we like basically resolve it right away. It never escalates into a fight. A fight is when fire meets fire. Hasn't happened in five years. <clears throat> Ooh, okay. Are those my natural curls? No, this is the Dyson um, hair curler. Uh, my loves, I'm going to go. It's quarter to one. It's quarter to one. I'm happy for you. I hope to find that one day. I keep sh I'm showing you how, my love. You will absolutely, you absolutely can get there. Absolutely, you can get there. Okay, my loves, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple seconds to set yourself up to get a notification when I go live. Uh, click my picture here once or twice. You're going to get a pop-up in the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell. When you do that, say, I just did. Thank you, my loves. Thank you for staying with us. Yes, my loves. Always my pleasure. Always my pleasure. So if there's any problems, you guys communicate before it turns into a fight. 100%. Uh, 100, 100%. I, I don't have any problem with him because I, I'm very happy with who he is and what he does and the choices he makes. I have no conflict with that. Um, do I ever wish he would make different choices? Uh, sure, you know, but I accept him and the choices he makes. Ultimately, they don't have a negative impact on me, so I have I have nothing to say. Um, he, same thing about me. 
the choices I make don't have a negative impact on him. I remember when I was first starting my business, he was wanting me to like make an income. He 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 didn't realize the vision that I had. I knew where I was. I knew where I was going. I knew where I was going. I knew it was going to be good. Um, it just took me some years to get off the ground because I was really building a solid platform to launch off of. Um, now that I am where I want to be, he's completely happy with what I'm accomplishing. He's very proud of me. Uh, he's, he's proud of the work that I put in. I do work hard and that's something that speaks his language. So he is very proud of me. Sounds like a great, great time with you and hubby. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you so much for spending time. Yes. Guys, if you want to get any of my books, you can get them on Amazon or anywhere you buy books online. If you've read any of my books, please go leave a review on Amazon or go leave some stars. Uh, I love that. I live for this. Just so you know, this is my love language. Um, make sure you go follow me on Instagram because I do that coaching giveaway every single month. I've been reading your books, listening to your podcast and watching your content. Yes, you're so welcome, lovely. Yes, yes, yes. Um, oh, and there's free stuff for you, eh? In the link tree in my bio, there is a free book. Uh, there's a free long distance manual. So go ahead and grab that, you guys. So I'm going to head up for now. I'm going to go have a snacky poo and do some more work. And then I will see you again soon. I love you.